Hey everybody, it's Fox. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another monthly Power Sheets review and wrap up and situation type thing. Uh, yeah, so it is March. We're going to be going over my March goals. I'm coming to you live from my Easter slash spring Christmas tree. Yes, there's going to be one for every season because I have to do whatever it takes to make the serotonin, okay? So, let's start with wrapping up February. Oh, February. A month when I had so many hopes and dreams and they all were dashed because I didn't fucking feel good and I was sad all the time. Hey, yeah, you thought you were gonna get a month where we didn't talk about depression? It's me. You don't get a break from that. It's real all the time. So, okay, let me get to the page here. So, oh, ow. Thought I just gave myself a paper cut. Okay, so here is, here is what my February tending list looked like, okay? February, notoriously short month, generally very cold in the city of Pittsburgh. Also like when marathon training starts to ramp up a little bit, so you know, that happens. Anyway, it did not go super according to plan. Oh, we're gonna refresh. I just started doing these Power Sheets videos last month, so, or I guess in January. So like, if I'm a little bit all over the place, getting into my rhythm of how I do these, I apologize in advance. All right, so to refresh, I have chosen for Power Sheets. It's a goal planning system. It's a yearly goal planning system. You can also, you do it monthly and quarterly, you make adjustments, but you can generally do it, you know, set your big goals once a year. So my, eight goals right here, which I have printed out. I, I made basically made a copy of my page, as you can see, it's, it's a copier, uh, so that I can have this on hand, so I don't have to flip back and forth whenever I'm doing my tending list each time. So my eight yearly overarching goals are take better care of my body, establish routines for mental and physical health, scrapbook and memory keep, become a distance runner again, try to do all 101 achievements, that is husband and my blog that we've had since 2009, uh, explore my Druid practice, grow my YouTube channel, and prioritize creativity and writing. If you watched last month's video, which I will link up here in the cards, um, I am like taking a break on the one, the 101 achievements stuff because it's just been, I haven't been in the right mental space to work on it. We're still mostly, you know, in lockdown situation. So like we do a lot of things where we go to restaurants and you know, events and things like that. We can't really do any of that. So I was like, I'm just gonna put it off till, I thought maybe till this month, but like things are still not significantly better. So maybe April or May, so we'll see. So, and then um, I have talked in the beginning about quarterly goals, prioritize creativity and writing. I'm not even gonna start that until next month. Not even gonna put like, that as a focus. I want to get everything else kind of flowing in the background. So anyway, um, I will go through a few of the things that I did not do in the month of February. First of all, organize my stickers. I did not organize my stickers. If you see my plan with me's every week, you know the struggle that I'm like constantly trying to fucking get through my stickers and find the right things. I do it beforehand so you don't see it on camera, but it's just like a stack of stickers that I pull out and have to sort through. So anyway, that got transferred over to March. Uh, declutter the hall closet downstairs. It really needs to happen. It's really like a mess in there. of Like shoes, scarves, winter gear. I have a bunch of running shit like my headlamp and my nighttime running clothes, like the you know reflective gear you have to wear. I just need to have it better organized. It needs to be in there, but it's just like chaos. So that got moved to this month as well. Um, Make a chore chart, that's another thing. So I am, well you'll see. Spoiler alert. I'm in the process of reading Unfuck Your Habitat for Cindy Gunter Baldo's book club that she's doing. I will link that below in the description here if you wanna see what her book club is about. So that's one of the books that we're reading. So I'm hoping that that will help me achieve that. Make a chore chart. Basically like, I didn't get that lesson in grown up hood where you're like, every week, I wash my floors. Like, I don't fucking know what I'm supposed to do or when I'm supposed to do it. I just am like, I need to wash these floors and then I wash the floors, but like, there's gotta be a, you know what I'm saying. So anyway, I didn't do that. 
and then tidy the second desk. So in the office where I film my plan with me and you see me recording my vlogs all the time, um, we have a second desk that is like technically husband's desk. He doesn't use it right now because he's working from home and the two of us in the same room, the two of us in the same house is enough. But the two of us in the same room would be too much. So anyway, it's kind of become a catch-all like where it's, we're just, anything that comes upstairs that we like don't feel like putting away in the right place or finding the right place, it's on there. So that needs to happen. Those things will be moved into my March goals. Thing that I started doing, but I didn't finish, and I'll tell you I had a genuine reason for not finishing it, is processing my name change paperwork. I am going back to my real name. I've had, what I did when we got married was I moved my real name into part of my middle name. So I have like two words as my middle name. And then I took husband's last name because I thought I wouldn't care. I got like really pressured into it by a bunch of other people who did it, you know, at the time. This was 2007, so things were different. And I thought I wouldn't mind, and I really mind. And so I just kind of, I don't actually use his last name for anything except for professional um, situations because it's on my pharmacist license. So I am in the process of changing my name back to just my real name. Uh, but the reason that I didn't, I, I gave myself, as you can, if you can see, I gave myself like a little bit of credit because I got the paperwork. Like I called the county and I explained what's going on and they sent me all the paperwork and I have everything to start, but I didn't actually do it because they're not sure how long it will take. And there's a possibility that we are gonna go away next month. And I didn't know if it was all gonna be processed in time. And I didn't wanna have an issue getting on a plane with my ID if my ID was like in the process of changing. Cause sometimes in Pennsylvania are, if you get a new ID or there's any changes to it, it can take like two weeks to arrive sometimes. Sometimes it's really fast and they can do it in the place, but sometimes it, you never know. So I did not wanna take a chance with that. So that is something that's gonna be moved to April when we get back from our trip if we go on a trip, cross your fingers. Pray to St. Minerva for me that we can go to the desert. Pray. Okay, so those are the things I didn't do. Oh, and the other thing I didn't do was finish my, I have a workout, hold that thought. Oh my God, my shoulder just popped. Okay, so. Last year I used the Happy Planner Wellness Planner and I would track my workouts in there. So I would use the sprocket printer to print a couple pictures from each workout and then I would do some like creative lettering of what the workout was and put some information about it and everything. I really liked that. It was nice and it had like, you know, it was like a planner and you would fill out each week, each day in and each week. And I liked that, but it was a little bit limiting on space and I love to take pictures when we go for long runs. Like today, my long run, I don't even know how fucking many pictures I took, but it was like 40. <laughs> Cause I just kept like, I don't know. I, I try to plan my long runs or any runs to like see exciting things or interesting things so I don't get bored. So I wanted some more flexibility. So what I've started, I bought this like random, it's giant, you can see how huge it is. Gigantic notebook that says purpose fuels passion. I just bought it at Barnes and Noble when I was there over Christmas. And so what I'm doing is I'm doing like a more free form, like journaling kind of thing. I don't know if you can see, you don't have to be able to read the words, but you can just see the idea. Um, so I wanted to get all of, I'm, yeah, this is January. I'm working on January now in March, but I wanted to get all of the ooh, January spreads done um, and like try to get back on track. Ideally what I would do is be like on track to the day and work on it every single, like every morning as part of my morning routine, print out the pictures from the workout the night before, put it in here. And I basically am just like, I'm keeping track of a couple things in here. I am, um, like what the workout was and my total fitness minutes. And then I'm keeping a tally. So like when it came to running, so this was, I wouldn't run on the first freezing rain, fucking Pittsburgh weather. Uh, so we ran on the second. So like when well, my first day of the run, so I did workout was the six mile run, my total fitness minutes. So I added, oh, and so then I put the total fitness minutes for that day. Then my, I put my yearly miles, that was the first run. So that was it. And then the yearly minutes. So I added the first and the second for my total yearly minutes fitness minutes and then the next day I ran with my running partner Christy and so then I added on here like total miles I added the two days so I'm keeping a tally of my total yearly miles because I would like to run 1500 miles this year we'll see if that happens but anyway so this is my fitness log when I talk about the fitness log that's what this is um I just started it this week and it is a little bit time consuming I think once I get onto track and I'm doing each day it'll be less time consuming but right now it's like going back and like remembering all this stuff. Now, thankfully I do document pretty well in my bullet journal and my 
Instagram I have, I do a, a fitness Instagram where I just keep track of what my workouts, it's like an accountability thing. So it's, I have that to go back to. So, but that was another thing that I really wanted to work on in February and I just fucking didn't do it. And part of what was going on in February, I was still struggling with this dental stuff. And now that I finally went to a new dentist and she fixed it, it is like, I can eat food again. I'm not in super amounts of pain. Like it's just, it's like getting your, getting your life back a little bit. Like it's still, I still have a little bit of sensitivity and some gum irritation because there was a lot of like stuff happening and it's gonna take a while for that to, you know, a couple weeks for that to like settle. But it is like literally two days after she fixed the teeth, I was able to eat hard food again. And I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. So anyway, that was the big thing, like February. And then I've just been like in a funky place with the pandemic. And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. So, things I did do really well on, I ran 100 miles, I completed that goal completely. I ran 101 miles, I think. Um, I got very close to getting current on photos. So what I mean when I say get current on photos is like every day, part of my morning routine is that I want to work on my photos. So I put, you know, on March 3rd, I put March 2nd's photos on my computer edit, delete the ones that are blurry, whatever, save and done. And then the next day, you know, and so that way I don't have this huge backlog. If you remember my 25,000 photo backlog, I don't want to go back there. I don't want to go back there. I just got out of it. So I did get really close on that. I, I got through like November, I think October, November on my DSLR, which I had a lot of pictures from October, November last year. And then I just finished October's camera phone photos. So I have November, February, and then my DSLR, I have like maybe a hundred photos from January and February on the DSLR because I haven't been taking pictures on the nice camera because we haven't been doing anything because I'm just fucking depressed all the time. We'll get there. We're gonna talk about it. Okay. Uh, and then I did my monthly plan. I don't have my planner here, but you don't have to see it. it just, I did my monthly plan. Um, basically I planned out, like I put in my overview of my month with like days that I work, days that I volunteered, days that I had appointments, anything like that into my planner. I don't usually use the monthly pages, but it's nice to have that visual to see. I have it on my Google calendar and that's what I usually use, but I want to have the visual there too. Cause I just didn't like, I work better on paper. So I did do that. And then I got very, very close to finishing December daily. Like I have like a week's worth of photos left to put in there and I started doing a lot of work on the journaling and on all the like embellishments and everything. So I gave myself a good amount of credit for that. So that is gonna be, you'll see that's gonna carry over to finish that. So um, also I wore sunscreen on my run today, but I feel like I still fucking got sunburned, which, or it could be windburn because it was really, really windy, but like I feel like just yucky. So if you see me like squirming, that's why. Also I did not get filler in my lips, but it looks like I did because I don't know, the sun and the wind and running. I don't fucking know, y'all. I just live in this body. I don't make the decisions about how shitty it feels all the time. Cool, so weekly action items for February. Run three to four times a week. I did that. Uh, face mask, I put it in all capitals and I said, face mask, girl, you need it with a bunch of exclamation points and I didn't fucking do it. I did it once. I should do one tonight because my face feels yucky. Um, three videos a week for YouTube. I did it one week and I just fizzled out. I just like getting the motivation to do anything in February was really hard. I didn't feel well physically. I felt a lot of stress and I, like uncertainty about stuff and and the pandemic, you know, grief is, is heavy on me right now. And I'm gonna talk more in depth about that when we go into the next month. Um, update my Fitbit dashboard. I did that every week. I am using Weight Watchers right now, the Weight Watchers app to track my, um, it's not really calories. It, you track your points on there, but it kind of gives you an idea of calories and tries to help you move towards eating more like lean proteins and vegetables. Like I can eat chicken, eggs, uh, any kind of vegetable. I can even eat corn for zero points. And I love that. So, um, yeah, so I've been using that, but you get your extra points for fitness if you log it with, and it's tracked in my Fitbit. So transferring like my runs and my workouts from my Garmin into my Fitbit 
it just takes a couple minutes. So, but anyway, I did that every time and I was, did very well with that. I did not play any World of Warcraft. I really wanted to try to get back on track playing World of Warcraft. It just, I didn't have the, the time. I just didn't like, I don't know. My days off have been really, really like scattered and hectic and, and I feel like I'm just treading water through them. So that didn't happen. And then um, one month of my 365 project, I didn't touch that at all. Really just didn't do it. So that I did not, those weekly tasks sometimes are hard for me, especially when it's like taking care of your body, like fucking doing face masks and shit. Just don't, I just don't want to take care of my body. I just don't want to do it. No, I just want to struggle. And then my daily action items, I didn't even track them. Like I just stopped tracking them. I tracked them the first two days of the month and I did some of these things like a lot, like reading a daily tarot card. I did that most days. I've been trying to pull a card in the morning to try to learn tarot, but also to like, I don't like meditation. Like meditation is boring as shit to me and it's hard to focus and it actually makes me more anxious because I'm so bad at it. So, but reading tarot is like a form of meditation for me where like I'm focusing on something and thinking about something and like, I don't know, that's been helpful for me. So that was one of my daily actions, which I've been doing well with that. My morning routine, I do that almost every day. I wanted to do those Peloton stretch videos every day as I try to stretch for 10 minutes a day because as runners, we're shitty at it and we need to do it more. So um stretching my leg out as I tell you that. I wanted to do those videos because it's like more of a guided stretch and I just, when I get home from a run sometimes I just want to like sit and like chill. Yeah. Okay. Who else is a runner and feels like sitting on the floor and just scrolling through your phone, pretending to kind of stretch after a run is like the runner equivalent of sitting in the car outside your house when you get home from the store, right? Am I right? Yeah, I'm right. Oh, I try to stay less than 90 minutes on Facebook and it didn't happen. And, oh, do my, drink my amino acids every day. Uh, that happened most days, but I didn't track it. I, I just, like at the daily stuff, I just, my power sheets just like, they were, I don't know where they were. They were somewhere near my desk. They were desk adjacent and I didn't fucking pick them up the whole month. That's the truth. Real talk, like brain just wasn't there, so. Then you do this month in review. Okay, so the month in review is like your little check in with yourself and how was your month? So people I'm grateful for and why? My runner family, because they're the reason that I'm still here and not fucking crazy. Uh, my shelter auntie is because they have been helping me through my dental nightmares because they have been like very, very informative and supportive through that, so that's been nice. And my friend Taylor, who is my Weight Watchers and workout planner and planner buddy, and so yeah, we talk all the time and that's been really nice. Uh, good things this month, the runner campfire we had for Emily's birthday after our long run, we came back over here, we had, it was 32 degrees and we were like, party time! It was 32 degrees and sunny. So it was like perfect weather to sit outside and have a campfire. We had Kahlua and coffee, we had some hard cider, we ordered breakfast pizza, it was just wonderful. Um, Oh, and husband and my parents all started their vaccine series in the month of February. So that was really exciting and very good too. So what I read or listened to, um, I read this book called The Only Good Indians. It's really, really good. Uh, it is like horror. I've I don't really read horror books. Like I love horror movies, but I don't really read horror books. And it's really, really good. Um, I will... I can't remember the author's name, and I don't have the book. I thought I had the book sitting out here, but I don't. Um, I, I haven't, I'm not familiar with him. This is the first time husband just found this book and thought it would be interesting to me, but it's really, really, really good. It's uh, like modern day horror story tied in with like Native American legend a little bit, and it's like totally up my alley. It was really good. I highly, highly recommend it. I will link to the Goodreads in the description here if you want to check that book out. It's really good. And then what am I listening to? I'm listening to my Desert Songs soundtrack because I'm just daydreaming about the desert constantly. And I'm listening to a lot of Empire of the Sun because they're one of my favorite bands. So goals that are growing well, running and tracking in my Weight Watchers app. I've been really consistent with tracking in there and that's been good. Um, I'm choosing grace over guilt about being an absolute mess due to tooth pain all month. Yeah, and depression and yeah. I'm just February, was a wash. We're just gonna write it off, you know? So, uh, favorite memories from this month, the runner campfire, walking dogs. We've had so many cute and adorable, wonderful dogs. Um, we watched Class Action Park. 
if you haven't seen that movie it's a documentary about the it's called action park it was like this horrible dangerous amusement park slash water park in and you think it's like in the past oh no it was like the 80s and 90s like it was open until 1996 but um i'll try to link to that on imdb if you want to check that out it was really really good and we actually watched it with my parents and i I told them about it and they seemed interested and I wasn't sure how they would like it and like my dad was like cracking up because he used to go to Kennywood all the time. They lived in Braddock. Wait, if you're not from Pittsburgh, Kennywood is our local amusement park. It's in West Mifflin, which is like across the river from Braddock. And so they used to go all the time when they were kids. And so he's watching this movie, uh, this documentary, like we would have been on that ride. We were, they're like talking about the, you know, in injury rates and fatality rates. And he's like, oh, we would have been on that. Oh yeah, my brothers and I would have ridden that. So it was really fun to watch it with them. Um, just hanging out with my parents has been nice this month. And then I said also working on December daily. I've really, really enjoyed that. Like I am so glad I got back into scrapbooking with that. So, uh, this month I am saying no to ordering on healthy food just because I'm anxious or stressed. Yeah, I gotta stop doing that. I gotta stop it. Just, I gotta, I gotta have better meal plans. And I am saying yes to working on my health and mental wellness because my mental health has been in the, uh, in the, in the tank right now. It's been not good. Um, so now we move on to March. And so this is prepare well, right? So it tells you your important to do's, things you're excited for, things that are on your mind and things that you're hopeful for. So important to do's, I had to go to the orthodontist. I already did that actually, cause I'm filming this after March 1st, but um, I had a work meeting on March 4th. I have my review with my boss on March 9th. And then I wanna get my spring decorations put up um, and decorated. I don't know why I drag my feet on spring decorations. I think sometimes because January and February are like mentally tougher on me and I just am like, oh God, I don't want to decorate the house. Like, I don't know why. And doesn't this look nice? This looks nice, right? I like it. Uh, I'm excited for maybe planning a trip, question mark. Um, maybe giving vaccines. I, we, my store does not know if we are getting them yet. I'm hopeful that we are. Like stores near us have gotten it and I'm like, yes, please let us be on the list, but we'll see. Uh, I'm excited that my parents and husband are getting their second dose. So by the end of March, our whole family will be vaccinated fully and reached full immunity. Like, I'm so excited. Uh, I'm excited that my teeth are feeling better. My sad life. On my mind, my dad's health always. That's always going to be on there. He's doing super, super well. Um, he's a little bit worried about getting, he gets a second dose of COVID vaccine on the 12th. And he's a little bit worried about having side effects. And then he has chemo. Uh, four days after that so it's gonna be a kind of rough week but I think he's been doing super 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 well so I'm like kind of optimistic about how well he's doing but you can't get optimistic with small cell lung cancer you just you can't um COVID is on my mind and then weird pandemic grief is really on my mind so y'all know me y'all know I love to talk about grief y'all know there is never a moment where I'm like I don't think we should talk about grief today I'm always like did you did you say you want to talk about grief? Like, I, you know, I'm the grief girl. Everybody comes to me with their grief and I say, oh, can't give it to me, I can handle it, right? I love talking about grief, not in a weird way, but in a, it's really important to talk about grief. And so we should make it part of a normal conversation kind of way, right? So I think that grief, anniversaries become very important in grief the anniversary of someone's passing, their birthday becomes different once somebody dies. Um, something maybe that you shared with that person, the anniversary of that day, even if it's like a, a relationship or a friendship, you know, that it comes up in your memories and there's the anniversary of the day that that friend and I hung out for the last time, you know, and, and anniversaries have a very important place in grief because it, it's a day that it reminds you of that loss. And so I think a lot of us have been feeling a combination of things. I think January and February have been particularly hard this year because we are still in the midst of the pandemic. And so the things that we normally do to get through the winter months, we don't really have. You know, for us personally, when winter gets really tough, we go out to nice dinners, we'll go to the theater, um, we will go to go dancing like several times a month, you know, get together with friends. Think about Super Bowl parties, Oscar parties. We often host a wine night in the winter months because it's like, well, we can't do anything else. Everybody come over to our house, we'll make food and we'll drink wine, you know? Those things that you normally do to get you through the toughest part of winter, 
in a pandemic, that's not really something you can do. So we don't have those things. So like, what do we have? Netflix and sadness and running. Running is never canceled. You can always run. So um, it's been a really tough in that way. I think that it's presented new challenges and, and you're starting to really there's that antsiness because the vaccine is rolling out, but it's not really on as fast as you would want it to. And there's uncertainty about like, well, is this really going to be enough? Is this really, you know, we're right on the precipice of like, shit could be really good or shit could be really disappointing. And, and it's a weird anxiety to balance there. But also we're coming up on the one year anniversary. And so a lot of us are seeing in our, you know, time hop or Facebook memories, you're looking at this and going like, wow, this is the last time that we went out and we didn't know it was gonna be the last time. What was really striking to me was, it was our friend Carissa's birthday uh, a couple weeks ago, and she just turned 30, and for her 29th birthday last year, we all went out to karaoke. And I had put in my vlog, I will link it here, see if you wanna see it. Um, I, we went out for karaoke, and I didn't remember how much I had filmed. So I thought, oh, it'll be really funny. She and one of her other coworkers did the Evanescence song, whatever it's called, Bring, Bring Me to Life, something like that. Anyway, you know the Evanescence hit song, right? And they did it and they did like choreography and they had like really awesome energy when they did it. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna send this video to her. She probably forgets that I took this video. And I was like, oh, okay. And I went back and I'm like, oh my God, I didn't realize I recorded like 10 to 15 minutes of everybody's performances that night. And it was just so, you know, nice but surreal to watch it because we didn't know that was the last time that we were all gonna be able to go to karaoke. Like, we don't go to karaoke as often as we used to. We used to go like every other week. And, but that's something we always have loved. And I had no idea that was like the last time that was gonna happen. And I'm watching it and like, husband, one of his like signature songs, he sings the Christina Aguilera song, You Are Beautiful. It's like the dramatic, you know, believe in yourself, self-esteem, positivity thing. So he sings that and he's singing it and everybody, and I, I just was panning over the crowd and like everybody in the fucking bar is singing along. They're singing, hi baby, singing to each other. Like people were taking, I got this moment where like this, couple, this group of people we don't even know were like taking selfies together and it just had this like beautifulness to the moment. And I remember thinking it was beautiful then, but going back and watching it now a year later, thinking like it's been a year since we've been around people like this, like it hit me so hard and I was just like started crying and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so emotional over this fucking cheesy, my husband singing this Christina Aguilera karaoke song. Like, I don't know. So I think a lot of us are going through that right now. Um, it's, I, I hesitate to call it pandemic fatigue. Layla is right here in case you can't see her. Um, I hesitate to call it pandemic fatigue because I have seen that mostly used in the context of like, well, I'm tired of this pandemic, so I'm not gonna follow the rules anymore. I'm tired of wearing masks, so I'm not gonna wear them. It's not that. It's, I, I really think, I really think that it is, it is grief. It is that we are experiencing this anniversary of this, you know, thing that completely disrupted and changed our lives. And I think a lot of us are, you know, really processing it right now because it's coming up on this year anniversary. So I think that was a big part of my struggle in the month of February was just like feeling the weight of this and like really thinking about like, God, it's been a year since we went out dancing. It's been a year since we did one of our night runs. Like our last night run was Friday the 13th of all times. Um, yeah, it's been, I think a lot of us are in that moment right now of, of really bringing back those memories and thinking about that. So yeah, I put that on as on my mind, is my pandemic grief. Um, also, to step back from that, let's go back into the planner and not my, you know, psycho analysis, psycho anal psycho analyzing of our grief. Um, yeah. So the weird pandemic grief, definitely on my mind. And then I said trying to stay organized, which I'm doing a really shitty job, partly because of just the lack of energy. And then should I buy a photo printer? And uh, spoiler alert, a photo printer. 
So I'm hopeful that my store gets to vaccinate, that we get the vaccine that we can administer, um, that we can go on vacation in April. I can get my house together. I stay on track with Lift4, which is a weightlifting program that I'm doing through Beach Body On Demand, and that I can maintain energy and momentum to be organized. Because I think that is really where I'm fucking struggling. It's like, I have no, no momentum going forward. I just really am like, oh, another day, you know? So that brings us to finally, the part you've all been waiting for, uh, my tending list for March. Whoa, you can't read that at all. There you go, you can kind of read that. Okay, magic of autofocus. So, always start with some encouraging words. Nine times out of 10, those are Dave Matthews. And so I use lyrics from Gray Street, which is not only my favorite Dave Matthews song, but one of my favorite songs of all time. It is based on the poet Anne Sexton, who is an excellent, excellent poet. Definitely check out her stuff. Uh, but I feel a special connection to her because she committed suicide on my birthday. I know that's like a weird thing to feel a connection to a person, but I have always loved this song and I didn't know what it was about. And then when I read the inspiration for it and then I looked up her poetry and I was like, okay, yeah, all of this makes sense. So anyway, it is lyrics from Gray Street that are my encouraging words for this month. She feels like kicking out all the windows and setting fire to this life because that is how Restless Fox is fucking feeling right now. And my priority is get your shit together, Fox. Because <laughs> my shit is not together. So, as I did last month, I organized my uh, monthly, or actually all of my action items according to the colors, like I color coded them with my goals here. So, most of them, as you can see, are related to establishing routines for mental and physical health. So anytime it's like house cleaning or anything that's gonna like make my brain feel better, I put that under that category. So that's what all of that is right there, most of it. I have two things related to scrapbooking and then I have one thing that's related to taking better care of my body. So let's dive in. Um, right, so the majority of my March goals are related to my established routines for mental and physical health because a lot of them are related to like getting the fucking house in order so that that will help my anxiety because i it's a it's a vicious cycle so when i'm anxious and depressed and i don't want to do anything i look around and i see everything is a mess and then i go like oh i should do it and then i'm like oh, i don't have the energy to do it and then i feel guilt over not doing it and i also feel like Ooh, it looks bad it needs to be done right so it's yeah it's it's not good so I'm hoping that I can maintain some momentum this month because I have been feeling a little bit better in the last week. It's, I'm filming this on March 7th. I put organized stickers on here again and I put organized stickers in all capital letters, schedule it. So I'm going to schedule it for Friday. Friday, March 12th. I'm fucking sitting down for two hours and organizing my stickers, okay? It's going on my planner when I do my plan with me. Uh, declutter the hall closet, which I already talked about. Declutter the towel closet, which is upstairs here. It shouldn't take more than an hour to do that. It just needs to be touched up. Um, tidy the second desk. I mentioned that came over from last month. Put up my spring decorations. Struggling for some reason. And then read um, Unfuck Your Habitat and then make a chore chart and plan from there. Um, I think one of the, they do talk in that book a lot about how to keep your house in order whenever you do have struggles with depression or anxiety or other, you know, chronic illness or things like that, that give you less energy than you would ordinarily have. So I think this is a good book to use to learn for that. So that's on the plan. And then I did have one thing that I put under here. I don't know really where it fits. It relates to like my professional career, um, which is I'm going to start volunteering at the 9th Street Clinic again. I used to do this when I was in college. And then when I first became a pharmacist and we moved back to Pittsburgh, I volunteered for a couple of years. It's an underserved clinic through Healthcare for the Homeless. And it's all free. Um, the visits with the doctors are free. Medications that we provide are free. And we can set people up for um, expensive brand name drugs. We can set people up with um, programs through the drug companies. So I haven't done it in years because um, I, it got really hard to do whenever I had an unpredictable schedule. So now that I have a predictable schedule, that's my dog crying. She left her stuffed spider on the ground right here and then went into the stairwell and now she's crying in the stairwell. I don't understand. So, but anyway, I wanna get back to clinic volunteering. Hopefully, maybe if we can get vaccine at the clinics, that'll be even more awesome to help out with that. So um, I'm gonna to try to be dedicating one day a month to volunteer. So uh, I have to respond to Mary, who is the, Mary Herbert is our uh, clinic coordinator. 
And so she's gonna get me set up in the system because we, you, the last time I was there, it was maybe 2012 was the last time that I volunteered there. And um, we used to handwrite all of the prescription labels. And so now they have it all in the computer system now. So she said, it, you have to learn the new system so you can print labels, so you don't have to handwrite them. Although I kind of liked handwriting. And I used to do, Saturdays is our Latino clinic. And we would have, um, I, I was trying to, I was working at those regularly before we moved to Los Angeles because I was trying to learn like medical Spanish from, because I thought I'm moving to Los Angeles, I would need it. Little did I know I was moving to the Filipino part of town and I actually needed to learn Tagalog, which I is really complicated. I was not gonna learn Tagalog. Um, but yeah, I wanted to have some like background, some basic medical Spanish. And so I would go to the Latino clinic on Saturdays because we had translators there and it was really like, really nice chance to learn that stuff, but we would handwrite the labels in Spanish. So yeah, it's been a while. So now it's all on the computer. So I have to go in and do like a training thing before I can be the only pharmacist there. I don't know how they do it. Like back in the day, I would have an intern. It would be like pharmacist, one pharmacist and one intern. Sometimes we'd have two pharmacists depending on the night. So we'll see. Like I said, it's been years since I've been there. So I'm super excited to get back into that. So I will be doing, oh, and I also picked up a third day at the shelter. Yeah, I am. Um, Perhaps I shouldn't be picking up extra volunteer shifts when I said that like I'm stressed about time all the time, but uh, I just like to help. Helping is my favorite. So anyway, those are all of the things that are related to my routines for mental and physical health. And then um, taking better care of my body, I had to schedule a mammogram. I have to go in for my first ever mammogram. So um, yeah, that's on the list. Want to get that done this month. I have been putting it off. I actually was told to go get it in December. Listen, I'm gonna let you in a little secret about those of us who work in healthcare. We're the worst patients. We're really, really good at helping other people, but we're really, really shitty about taking care of ourselves. So I was supposed to go back in December and then all the stuff with my teeth happened. And then I was really worried about the cost because um, I have to go for a mammogram and I have to go for an ultrasound because Sometimes I say the mammogram is not good enough for some of us with big boobs, big boob problems. And yeah, so I have to go for both of them. And I was really concerned that it's going to be super expensive because the last time I had to go for an ultrasound is when they thought I had an ovarian cyst and I had to pay $2,500 out of pocket because uh, I hadn't hit my deductible yet. So I've been like dragging my feet and not doing this. So um, I did, my friend was like, gave me some information about the place that she went. And then I looked up um, my, the hospital that's in my, the hospital system that is in my network. And it says like the out-of-pocket cost is like 250 bucks, not 2,500 bucks. So I guess ultrasound for boobs is a much less serious situation than uh, inner parts, which I guess makes sense when you think about it because the uh, ultrasound, pelvic ultrasound is very, very invasive if you haven't had it happen. and they. Nobody ever suspected you had an ovarian cyst, it's just, it's better that way, it's better. So anyway, girl talk aside, um, I have to go for a mammogram, so I have to get that scheduled and go that for that this month, and I'm not gonna put it off anymore. Uh, I watched, if you watch Jen Chapin, she just talked about going for her mammogram, and I haven't read, seen the follow-up yet, um, the follow-up video, but I watched hers and I was like, Fox, this is a sign, you're watching this video. And that means that you should do the thing that your doctor told you to do. So, cool. So the final two things are my scrapbooking related things. Um, one is to finish December daily and the other is to finish January, 2020, which I'm like so fucking close. I just have like one page that I'm just not happy with. I have to make some adjustments to it and then it'll be done. And so I wanna get those two things finished this month. And then I wanna do stories by the month, um, March, this March, like current March in real time. So basically my goal is like once a week to check in and see what pictures, since I am doing my pictures every single day, which I've been doing pretty well with that this first week. She's digging the carpet. My dog. Layla Grace. What are you doing? Anyway, so, um, I want to do that this time, in real time, and then that way that'll be one month that I'm not behind on. <laughs> I mean, I know they, the joke is that like scrapbookers are always behind, but like I don't want to be the 
this far behind. So, so those are my monthly action items. Nothing like too huge, all things that should be manageable and all things that need to get done. So um, my weekly action items, I put face mask on there again. And also Epsom salts because it is the height of marathon training right now. Like I had a 17 mile run today. Like this is the part where you have to soak in Epsom salts if you don't want your feet to just betray you. So I need to be doing that. Um, three YouTube videos a week, lift twice a week, and do two weeks of my fitness log. I'm already, I told you this is the seventh and I have done two days. Yeah, that one's already going well. Um, my daily action items, I put have amino acids every day. That's really good for muscle recovery. So I'm doing well with that. Um, 10 minutes of cleaning up my Spotify. I think I mentioned this in a previous video. I have 694 Spotify playlists and they're like tons of duplicates. They're not organized. I can't find anything. So I've been working on, it's really, really unwieldy to use the interface on Spotify, which is like kind of annoying me. But um, I'm trying to like move everything like I have all my workout playlists, I have all my writing playlists, I have like decades, so my 80s mix, my 90s mix, you know, that kind of stuff. I haven't tried to categorize everything so that way when I can be like, oh, I want to listen to a different workout mix or something, I can go to my list there. So I'm trying to spend 10 minutes a day on that. I'm just putting on like a 10 minute YouTube video and watching that and then sorting while I'm doing that. Um, five photos a day on the 365 project. I'm doing a little bit better on that, still kind of a struggle. Track my veggies and my social media use in here, and that's what I've been doing. I don't know if you can see that. No, I'm not good at this. I don't know if you can see if I go like this. Okay. Um, so I'm just putting every day, like, I'm trying to have two vegetables, like green vegetables, not like, well, not just green, but like, not potatoes and not corn, even though corn is zero points. Um, I'm trying to track what I have every day so that way I make sure that I got my two in. And then I'm looking on that your time on Facebook tracker and putting down how many minutes. Right. So, and then five minutes working on cleaning up my screenshots and like my download folders on my phone. That's another thing that like, I have like 2000 screenshots on there. And I know some of them are things I can just delete. It's just taking up space, but some of them are funny memes. And so I'm categorizing my memes into, um, where I want to keep them. So that way I can be like, oh, that was funny pharmacy meme and I want to send it to my friend from work or the running meme and I want to send it to one of my runner girls. So trying to work on that. So so I think this is a manageable month. There's a lot on there, obviously, but I think it's all manageable stuff. It's all like measurable stuff that I can do. Like if I'm like, okay, what can I work on today? There's a task that I can do that will get me towards my goal. So I think I can do that. We are possibly, if everything continues in the way that it is. I'm not ready to make concrete plans yet. Um, we are hoping to go out to California for a week in April, mid-April, um, just to do some hiking, it's like the same stuff we do all the time, like do some outdoor wine tastings, go to dinner outside, really like go to the desert for a little bit, go to Big Sur for a couple days, um, just get away and get some good, good hiking in is the main thing and some good, good sunshine. So we're hoping that that's gonna happen. So I feel like getting my house really in order is gonna be a good step and getting more organized is gonna be a good step to me feeling like, okay, I can go away for a week and yeah. So, so that is my power sheets for the month. So thank you everybody so much for watching. Uh, if you're new here, I do publish videos twice a week. I do a Monday plan with me and I do a Thursday vlog and then I do videos like this try to do them like once a week, but it doesn't always happen because I just talked about why that doesn't happen. So please subscribe if you're new here. I thank you so, so much for watching and everybody, please go easy on yourself. If you are hit with the pandemic grief right now, if it feels, how is this harder at one year than it was the first month that it was happening? Like give yourself that grace. Like just don't beat yourself up about it. It makes total sense that it's harder right now. Like it absolutely makes sense. Even though the vaccine is coming out and it's coming out faster and faster every day and it's so exciting and people are getting vaccinated and cases are going down. Even though all that's going on, if you feel like you are struggling mentally and emotionally because of this, it is totally normal. It is totally normal. Talk to your friends, go for a run, talk to your therapist, you know, write about it. Like, you know, I don't wanna say embrace it because that sounds weird, but um, allow yourself to experience your grief and don't just try to hide it. Work through it and and uh, meet it like it's a, 
a friend that lives with you because grief is a friend that lives with you. It might be a friend that you fucking hate a lot of the time. It might be a frenemy more times than it's a friend, but grief is a roommate that you cannot kick out. And that's just how it is. And so if you are having these grieving feelings and these restless feelings, you know, you're not alone. A lot of us are having those feelings and it's okay and it's totally normal. So as always, my humans, please take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I will see you all in my next video.